Hello, everyone, and welcome to In Your Business. I'm your host, Marissa Lynn. Today on the show, we are talking about physical and financial wellness. And up first, we will be talking about how stress may be impacting your gut health and digestion. And as a small business owner right now during a global pandemic, it's no small feat to manage those stress levels. Our first guest is Jade McLean. She is a certified nutritional practitioner specializing in helping individuals overcome uh, digestive, chronic digestive issues. Jade, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Jade, um, you are a certified nutritional practitioner. And um, for those who are not familiar, can you share with us what, um, what that means? Yeah, so I work with clients on a one-on-one -on -one basis um, who are dealing with chronic digestive disorders or health issues that are stemming from an imbalance within the gut. Um, so this can even include autoimmune diseases. So I really um, focus with them on finding a nutrition plan that works for their unique body, for their condition, um, so that they can heal naturally. And Jade, years ago, you actually um, went on your own healing journey. And yeah. uh, can you tell us about this transformation in your life? Yeah, so um, I, I struggled with my health um, very early on, even like in infancy. And um, it went on, you know, even into my childhood years. And when I was 13, that's when I was diagnosed with celiac disease, which is an autoimmune um, condition. So that's when I really had to start making the, the changes in my life. And um, in my 20s, I ended up going back to school to study nutrition, um, mainly to, to learn how to heal my own body. Um, but then it, it kind of turned into a career change. And I learned how to fuel my body properly to, to be able to heal my gut, um, which I didn't realize at the time was also impacting my mood. So we, we'll talk about that connection today as well. Um, so you've found some relief um, through nutrition and Jade, business owners right now have had a year like no other. Yes. Um, people are dealing with stress, stresses of all kinds. And uh, I wanted to talk with you about the stress cycle and how it impacts the gut and digestion. Yeah, so stress can impact the gut in, in a huge way and, and honestly, our overall health as well. So when we start off with a stressful situation, our body goes into what's called fight or flight mode. And the blood goes from our organs into our muscles because it just wants to run away from this fearful, stressful event. And when this happens, it kind of forgets about digestion. So our cortisol levels increase during times of stress and our digestive enzymes, as well as our stomach acid decrease. Mm -hmm. And both of these we need for proper digestion. So if our stomach acid and um, we don't have enough digestive enzymes, then our food is not going to be able to break down properly. So a couple of things can happen here. Um, number one, we, um, our body won't be able to absorb the nutrients properly because we're having undigested food particles going through our system. Um, and the second thing is that these undigested food particles can cause um, a lot of inflammation and digestive distress. So some people might experience motility issues, um, such as irritable bowel syndrome, also known as IBS, when someone can go from, you know, experiencing one extreme to the other uh, with their bowels. And that's where that really strong gut brain connection happens. And, uh, you know, if this is happening long term on a, a chronic basis, it can lead into more um, severe issues, um, something like intestinal permeability, also known as leaky gut. So um, our intestinal cell wall is actually very thin. And over time, if we have a lot of um, chronic distress, it can wear away on that intestinal cell wall and it can begin to 
just gradually pull apart and create these tiny microscopic little holes. And this is problematic because um, bad bacteria, pathogens, food particles can seep through there and go through our bloodstream, causing a whole range of health issues. So that's why managing stress right away is so important to avoid you know, something more um, serious from stemming. Um, and then also our bacteria ratio can be thrown off. So we have good bacteria and we have bad bacteria within our gut. And um, when we're in a state of stress, it can elevate the bad bacteria in our, uh, in our gut. And um, our beneficial bacteria, one of their many roles is supporting our body to produce uh, serotonin. So 90% of serotonin is actually created in the gut, not the brain. And um, this can then lead to mood disorders like anxiety and depression if our body is not producing adequate amounts of serotonin. So this is where that vicious cycle can, can happen. Wow. So there's, there's a lot there to think about. Um, and this can all stem from stress and prolonged stress. People have been under uh, stress for a long period of time, and, and this can be um, high levels of stress. So what can people do going back to the stress cycle and trying to manage um, the stress that people are under? What can people do or what can they do um, or implement right away to help them if they're experiencing any um, digestive issues or um, any of the other issues that you had mentioned? Yeah, so the first thing, of course, being a nutritionist, I'm gonna say is to focus on those nutrient dense foods because they are going to be supporting our gut health, which is going to support us mentally as well. Um, another thing is between 70 and 80% of our immune system resides within our gut. So um, really nourishing our body with those nutrient dense foods, especially right now is so important. Um, another thing is being mindful of how much information we're consuming. It's great to be aware of what's going on, but if you're finding, you know, you're just so immersed and kind of bombarded with everything, just setting some boundaries for yourself um, to protect yourself mentally and physically as well. Um, even if you're having like a phone call with a friend or family member, um, just tell them up front, like, let's keep this conversation light and joyful and upbeat. Tell me something good that's going on in your life. And I think people re really respect and, and understand that. Um, if you're feeling overwhelmed, practice saying no and carve, carve some time out for you. Um, it's really important to have some time for yourself. Um, it can be something even simple, just going out for a walk, getting some fresh, fresh air, breathing in that fresh air, getting some sunlight from um, natural vitamin D from the sun, which supports our hormones and our immune system. And then you can also do some breathing techniques because when we are stressed out, a lot of people don't realize that we are actually holding our breath. So um, one technique that I really like is called four, seven, eight. So you breathe in for four seconds, you hold for seven, and then you breathe out for eight seconds. You can do this even like right before bed. If you have a hard time kind of turning your brain off and just calming down, um, that's a really great technique to just kind of control your breath. Um, and of course, if you need to go and talk to someone and seek help, um, definitely do that as well if needed. Yeah, that's a good technique. I'm going to try that later today. <laughs> yeah, it works amazing. <laughs> um, so Jade, you uh, mentioned about the connection between the gut and the immune system and how 70 to 80% of the immune system resides in your gut. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's huge. Um, yes. I didn't know that um, until I heard you, um, I read about it in your Instagram. Um, but I wonder if you can talk a little bit about that. Um, our immune systems are so important right now, especially with COVID. So it's mm -hmm. kind of a balancing act right now to manage yeah on this. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah. So, um, our gut bacteria has a huge role in managing that, um, that Im the immune system. So, um, a healthy ratio of bacteria will be something like 80 to 20%, um, of 
80% friendly bacteria. So when we have that, it's going to be supporting and strengthening that immune system. So really focusing on, like I said, those nutrient dense foods are really going to support um, our immune system, as well as our gut health, our hormones. Um, so it's definitely important right now, of course, anytime, but especially right now to be focusing on um, our improving our gut health, which is then going to have a huge impact on our immune system as well. Jade, if, um, if people watching were to choose um, some really good foods to <laughs> in their diet, what would be some key things or some easy um, additions to their daily routines. I know it's not okay. a fix, but <laughs> what would so you I'll, I'll talk about a couple of things. So there's probiotic rich foods. So probiotics are those um, live living bacteria. So you can find these in a lot of like fermented foods, sauerkraut, fermented pickles, um, kefir. So adding in those probiotic rich foods can be really helpful to adding in those friendly bacteria. So they're going to help to support our mood and our immune system as well. But these friendly bacteria, they need food to eat as well. And, um, some people might not be familiar with prebiotics, prebiotic rich foods. Some examples would be like onions, garlic, green bananas, apples, asparagus. These foods are going to help to feed our friendly bacteria. Um, so they're, they're providing that fuel and nourishment for the bacteria so that they can support us with our health. So adding in those foods can um, definitely be helpful as well um, during this time. Okay, that's good to know. Um, Jade, um, where can people learn more about what you do? Yeah, so uh, they can find me at reclaimedhealth.ca. That's my food blog where I share all my recipes and health tips. Um, and then as well on Instagram, I'm very active on there at reclaimedhealthjade, J-A-Y-D-E. Um, and I share lots of gut health tips um, on Instagram too. Okay. We have just about a minute before we have to uh, end the segment here. Jade, can you uh, give us some recommendations? Do you have any more um, help or suggestions for people to manage their stress or to help um, manage their gut levels or anything um, to help with, I guess, their moods? Um, so one thing that can really help with digestion um, is to, when you're having a meal, sit down undistracted, so turn off the TV, uh, make sure you're in a very calm state, uh, because when you're consuming your food, you really want your body to be focusing on digesting that food properly. And when it's breaking it down properly, you're going to be absorbing those nutrients um, and feeding those friendly bacteria, which is also going to be helping to support your mood. So definitely eat undistracted, chew your food well, um, so you can get all those nutrients in. Um, Jade, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing um, all these insightful tips with our audience. Um, so this is Jade McLean of Reclaimed Health. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And um, up next, we will be talking about achieving financial wellness with money coach, Mike Cross. You won't want to miss it. Stay with us. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Hi, I'm Jennifer. And I'm Allison. We certainly know that the pandemic has been so difficult on families and kids. So we put together some great episodes of The Parenting Show for you to bring you tips and strategies to help you through. Topics like dealing with divorce or getting your kids to help pitch in during this difficult time. And many, many more. We've got lots of help coming your way. That's only on Rogers TV.
Hi, I'm Sean Lackey, and this is Sold with Sean Lackey. You should check us out if you want to find out what's going on in the world of real estate. We'll have all sorts of guests to keep you in the loop on what's going on in this wonderful world. Welcome back to In Your Business. I'm your host, Marissa Lynn. Today on the show, we are talking about wellness. And in this segment of the show, we have with us high performance finance coach, Mike Crofts. Mike is on a mission to help you live debt free mm. and wealthy. Mike, welcome to the show. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me. So good to have you. Um, so Mike, you are a money coach. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, we, you know what, as a money coach, we help people um, get their finances figured out. So for most people, it's like, you know, uh, they're living in debt, they've tried to get out, they've struggled, they've gone back, they've done the yo-yo finance thing. And uh, where I come in is I help people break those patterns, those cycles, help them get out of debt, get on a plan. And then ultimately start to become wealthy, teach them about, you know, what investing looks like or how to become wealthy, what that looks like here long term. And so that's kind of my role when I work with people and talk with people and teach people is walking through all those principles. Mike, um, for those, so our show is for business owners and um, some of some business people work very hard um, and you are looking to help people stay out of debt and make their money work for them. So can you tell us a little bit about the difference um, between working with a financial coach versus working with potentially a financial advisor yeah. or um, what the difference is or even a financial planner? Because yeah. all these things are quite confusing for people who are le trying to learn about um, yeah. managing their finances. So yeah, the, the big difference, yes, yeah, so you got financial coach, you got financial advisors, some people call themselves financial planners. There's a whole bunch of names out there. But essentially, when you boil it, boil it down, there, there, there's two different roles. Uh, there's a financial coach. And the role of a financial coach is different than the role of a financial advisor. So the role of a financial advisor is really to help you take care of the future right? Uh, they do that through selling your life insurance. They do that through helping you trying to invest, whether it's stocks, bonds, mutual funds, whatever it is. They help you try and invest and, and they help you try and take care of the future so that in 10, 15, 20 years down the road, you can be comfortable, uh, successful when you retire, you know, have all those things in retirement. The job of a financial coach is to take care of today. So for a lot of people, um, the struggle is that they don't know how to manage, they don't know how to manage or they've had, you know, luck hasn't been in their corner uh, and they've, they've gone, you know, into whether it's debt or whether it's um, just not knowing what to do or how to do it. And so the job of a coach is to take care of today. We get today taken care of so that you can get in position to start to take care of tomorrow, start to uh, invest and start to you know, build some wealth doing it that way. And so that's the big difference is coaches, we take care of today, help you get the right mindset. Advisors, we kind of hand it off to them when you're ready and they start to take care of tomorrow by investing and different things like that. Okay, awesome. Well, um, business owners today, I guess there there's a bit of a divide. There's a lot of business owners who are struggling. Um, they didn't expect or plan for 2020, 2021. Yeah. Um, some people are um, just paying their bills, uh, maybe got into some debt. So we'll talk a little bit about that um, and, and getting into a system that may be helpful for them. And then there are people on the other hand, and savings are at an all time high for some people because their expenses are lower and they've been able to save some money. So we'll talk about um, how, what they can do with those uh, investments. So um, Mike, you have said that um, on your website, you have said that um, getting out of debt isn't hard. You just need the right system. So can you talk to us about what that system looks like? Yeah. Yeah. So you're right. Getting out of debt isn't hard. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, now, I didn't say easy, right? There's, there's a difference there. It's, it's simple, um, but for a lot of people, you know, but it's not always easy. And then the plan that we work with people in terms of getting out of debt, whether you're in business or it's personal, the idea is there's a couple steps you have to take. Number one, you've got to make a decision and decide that this is what you're going to do. 
what I found is most people that want to get out of debt, they haven't made that decision um, or that dedication to get out here. And so they don't fully ever commit to it and they don't fully get that result of living debt free. So number one is you got to decide. Number two is you've got to stop borrowing more money. You almost got to draw that line in the sand and say, no matter what, we're not borrowing any more money. And that's what I did. So we were $80,000 in debt about 10 years ago. And, and that's what I had to do is we had to say, no matter what, we're not going to borrow any money. Once you make that decision uh, to not borrow any money, to stop using credit cards and, and all that stuff, stop borrowing money, um, you've got to have um, some sort of savings. I call it an emergency fund. You've got to have some money put aside because life's going to happen at some point. The car is going to break down. The roof's going to leak. The AC is going to go, you know, the hottest month of the year. The furnace goes in the coldest month of the year, right? It just happens. There's going to be a global pandemic. <laughs> There's going to be a global pandemic, right? I mean, we saw it in 2008. We saw it in 2011. We saw it in 2001. Like, there's always these recessions, right? Um, so I'm not, when COVID happened, I wasn't surprised. We were actually expecting something. I didn't know it was going to be COVID. People for a long time were talking about the market turning and crashing and all that stuff. And so I wasn't surprised when it happened. I was actually surprised what caused it to happen. But yeah, so you're going to need some money put aside. In business, we call it retained earnings. Money put aside for either growth opportunity or put aside for when that negative event happens like COVID or whatever the next thing's going to be. And, um, and, and so that's the next step. Okay. And, and just for... Um, our viewers' knowledge, um, what percentage of their income should be going to those retained savings? We usually, you know, if you're, again, if it's personal, we usually say a thousand, maybe $2,000 until you're debt free. Then once you're debt free, we say three to six months of expenses put aside uh, in a savings account, uh, an account that, you know, it's not invested in the market. It's just a savings account that sits there. And when life happens, when the car breaks down, you've got money. Okay. For businesses, we usually say, if you can, uh, 10 to 15% uh, into retained earnings. Uh, and retained earnings is kind of like an emergency fund, is a growth opportunity fund. For businesses, it could be used a couple of different ways. But for businesses, about 10 uh, ten to 15% if you can do that. Uh, but either way, if you're going to make a decision to stop borrowing money, stop using the credit cards like I do, or like I did, um, you want to have some money put aside so when life happens, you don't go back into the cycle of using debt. And that's what happens is most people stop using debt, life happens, they've got to pull up the credit card to cover the unexpected expense, right? And so that little emergency fund helps break that. Okay. What if um, people are just paying their bills right now? It's a challenge for them just to pay those bills right now. And this sounds great, but... Um, some people are just getting by as it is. So what would you say to people who are in that situation? I would say, take a deep breath. It's gonna be okay. You're gonna get through this. Okay, we're gonna get through this. This is just a season. Um, but start to look for the opportunity um, and, and right now with what's going on here. And there's lots of opportunity in this market. There's lots of opportunity in this world right now with everything going on. And so start to look for different opportunities and different ways you can help. Um, you know, I had, a, I had a, a niece of mine who was looking for money and was asking, hey, can you just give me 20 bucks? I was like, nope, but I'll teach you how to earn $20. And so one of the things we did with her is we taught her, we said, hey, go knock on 10 doors and, you know, offer to cut their grass and seed it. And, you know, for, for 20 bucks, she'll show up once or once or twice a month, you know, and all of a sudden she started making money. No, she was 14, right? So 200 bucks was a lot for her. But, you know, as, a, as an adult here who's struggling to get, who's living paycheck to paycheck, right now in the marketplace, there is a lot of opportunity. Um, so I would say if you're working, maybe see if you can do a raise. Um, right now is a time that businesses are giving raises. Um, or maybe it's a time if you've got a great asset, a skill asset, time to see what the competitor is willing to pay you to come over and do that asset. So one thing you got to know is in the market right now, since 2008, Okay. Um, employers have, have, have only been given cost of living wages, two, 3% uh, increases every year. But what's happened in a lot of employers budget is they put a lot of money into hiring. And so you'll find right now that there's new hires making more than people that have been at that company for five, 10, 15, 20 years, because there's a lot of budget allocation going into new hires. And so if you've got an asset or a skill, Mm -hmm. consider shopping the competition and seeing maybe you can get a raise that way. That's another thing I would tell people to do as well is seek out that raise. Okay. 
That's a good advice. Um, so let's get back to, uh, you had three steps to managing your finances, I believe. Was it three? Um, so the first- I had one more, yeah. Retained <laughs> earnings. Um, the second you had mentioned to me is live debt free. Yeah, yeah, get out of debt, make a decision not to borrow any more money. Okay, and then the third is build wealth. To build some wealth, yeah, to go and start to save, to go and start to, you know, the first thing you wanna do is get out of debt, get that emergency fund put aside and then you start to build wealth. Okay. That's the way, that's the process. We teach people to do it and how to do it. Um, but that's, that's what you want to do there. Yeah. Get an emergency fund, work a plan to become debt free. Most people can do it in 24 months, maybe 36 months max, depending on your situation, but it shouldn't take five years, 10 years or any of that stuff. You know, 24 to 36 months become debt free. From there, you build an emergency fund, three to six months of expenses put aside. And then from there, you're into wealth building. Uh, saving and investing in the stock market. Maybe it's rental properties, buying homes, that type of stuff. Okay. And Mike, you offer um, a free webinar, right? On your yes. website. What is it called? Yeah, it's called uh, The Five Shifts My Clients Use to Kiss Debt Goodbye for Good. And um, our audience members can check that out if they're interested um, just to learn about how to get out of debt. On the other side, Mike, um, we just have a few minutes before we have to end the show, um, but I wanted to talk about those people who are in the uh, fortunate situation to have saved some money um, with lower expenses. What would you advise um, to people who are in that position? Yeah. So the first thing I would say is, where are you on the steps? Are you debt free? Do you have an emergency fund? If you do, uh, then it's time to take that money and I would start using it to go and invest. Uh, again, mutual funds, stocks, bonds, that's a thing. Get a professional that can help you. But right now in the market, we're seeing all time highs across the board, across the board. Right now is a great time to be in the market and experience the market. So if you're at that stage, go and start investing, have that money produce money for you. If you're still in debt, um, then work the plan that we just laid out here. Put $1,000, $2,000 away for an emergency fund. Tuck that away for your emergency fund. And then start to uh, work a plan to pay off the debt. We recommend the debt snowball. It seems to psychology, you know, psychology wise, it seems to be the fastest way to get out of debt. So work the debt snowball, pay off your smallest debt first, go to your largest. And then once you're out of consumer debt, that is, um, save that three to six month emergency fund. Great. Um, so Mike, we are almost out of time. How, if people wanted to reach out to you for more information or learn more about what you do, how can they find you? Super simple. Head over to moneycoachmike.com and everything you need is there. Uh, our free trainings there. If you want to come join us on Facebook and our, and, our, and our private Facebook group, we've got a couple thousand people in there rocking right now. You can come join us in there as well. Or if you just want to reach out and contact us, you can get our contact information off of the site as well. We have just about 30 seconds. Do you have any advice for business owners right now? Yeah, right, right now we live in one of the most pros, uh, prosperous times in the history of the world. Uh, for business owners, go out and get it. You can do it. Uh, business is one of the best ways to break the cycle of poverty and grow here, but do it right. Do it without debt and uh, you take the opportunity in the market we have today and grow your business. Thank you so much, Mike, for joining us today and sharing uh, those great tips with our audience. And thank you to our viewers for watching. Tune in again next week for another episode of In Your Business. We'll see you then. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. When we turn a blind eye to racism, we turn a blind eye to ourselves. As Canadians, we disavow all forms of racism. Built.